Andy, you were already a legend in public interest communications law back when I first got involved at the FCC. And, and I'm old. That's been a long time. Uh, so it's, it's truly remarkable what you've done, how many people you've touched, how much impact you have had on this country and the world through your work. And I'm personally honored as a professor at the University of Pennsylvania to be associated with the place where you went to school. So congratulations on doing so much for so long for so many. It's hard in 30 to 45 seconds to tell you what my favorite memory of Andy is because I have so many. That said, here's one. When I was at the commission, Andy used to lobby me on various issues. However, despite the many issues that Andy was interested in, he was always consistent in that he lobbied for the public interest. And many times he was the only one appearing before the commission that did that. It was always a pleasure to receive Andy because his positions were always well thought out and well articulated. I never had to wonder why he had come to see me or what it was that he wanted. And he's continued along that path his entire career. The Commission and indeed the public are fortunate to have someone as gifted as Andy to watch out for the public interest. I first met Andy when I was in law school and I interviewed with him for a position at the Media Access Project. Although I never did work at MAP, I did have the opportunity to work as co-counsel with Andy many times over my over 30 years at Georgetown's Institute for Public Representation. In fact, Andy and I worked together on one case, the appeal of the FCC's broadcast ownership rules for over 25 years. Thanks to the generosity of the Benton Foundation, Andy came to work with me at Georgetown and my students uh, from 2014 to 2019. Andy's been a great mentor and a good friend. I know of no one else who's been so committed to the public interest and who's inspired so many others. I'm Dick Wiley, and my favorite memory of Andy is watching him do a crossword puzzle while sitting at the head table during an oral argument. Yes, it was amusing, but it also showed his ability to do several things at once and do them well. And as a superb lawyer and a fair-minded negotiator, he is always ready to litigate if things can't be settled. You don't always have to agree with Andy on regulatory issues to both like and respect him as I do. And why not? After all, I'm a crossword puzzle geek too. Hi, I'm Dave Danner. I worked with Andy when I was in my 20s. Media Access Project was my first job as an attorney. And you'll hear from others uh, that Andy was a great First Amendment lawyer and a communications lawyer, and I couldn't agree more. But what I appreciate now, so many years later, is what a great teacher and mentor Andy was to me. I learned so much from Andy. He had confidence in me that I didn't have in myself. And he gave me opportunities that still amaze me. And to watch him always, always, always put the public interest first. And that has stayed with me throughout my career. Congratulations, Andy. It's a great award and you really deserve it. All the best. Take care. Andy, I want to add my voice to the chorus of congratulations and thank yous. You've helped so many people find their way in the world of communications, law, and policy. The world is a better place, and as important, our nation's media is more responsive and accountable than it would have been without decades, your decades, of advocacy. The core ideas of democracy, accountability, transparency, they're imbued into the public interest standard of the Communications Act because of what you have done. It's a tremendous legacy. It will last far beyond this day or this honor. And of course, all the work that you've done and the kindness you have shown to so many people like me um, is an equally important part of the legacy, uh, building up people to carry on these important values um, as the years ahead uh, is also a testament. So once again, congratulations and my best wishes for you. Andy, I'm thrilled to be able to add a few words of Congratulations and happy birthday uh, in this tribute to a guy with whom I began as an undergraduate at Penn in the 1960s and then walked the halls of Penn Law School in the turbulent early 1970s. 
I hope you'll take great, great pride in looking back, knowing that unlike most of our contemporaries, you took a professional road less traveled. You shaped and indeed created a crucial public policy sphere and helped to ensure that the work that you did would be carried forward by the work of your students and your mentees. What a contribution, what a career, congratulations. I think Andy's finest moment as a lawyer was the argument to keep Prometheus versus FCC, the appeal of the FCC's effort to deregulate um, media ownership rules and keep that in the Third Circuit. It was a lawyerly procedural point that involved a lengthy oral argument, and it was just a master class at every level. And winning that motion was what made it possible to win the appeal. Uh, delighted to work with you and, and honor you for all your contributions to um, social action and the improvement of our community democracy here. And I, I am just delighted to have been um, working with you over those decades. And I uh, wish you well and good health for you and Linda and um, warmest regards. Andy, congratulations on this recognition. It's well-deserved. Uh, but I also really remember your warm smile and your warm welcome. And those are things that I've taken with me as I've pursued my own career. And uh, the lesson of being passionate about what you do uh, and being a great collaborator are things that I really have tried to bring with me. And I thank you for all of that. Wish you uh, many years of good health. Hi, it's Jessica Gonzalez here with Free Press. Just coming in to thank Andy for his 50 years of service and to thank him personally um, for his mentorship. Andy hired me about 15 years ago as an intern at Media Access Project. Later on when I was at Georgetown, I learned a lot from Andy about how to be a good legal writer. He never messed with my style. Uh, he always focused on making sure we were making the best legal arguments. Andy, there's not enough words to express how much I appreciate you and how much you've contributed to my own trajectory. Congratulations on all your years of public service. You've left and are continue to leave an incredible mark on the field. Sending you all my love. Bye. Hi, this is Tom Wheeler. And what a privilege it is to say something about Andy Schwartzman. You know, I've been asked, what's Andy's impact on my life? It's like having Jiminy Cricket sitting on, the, on your shoulder, whispering in your ear. And Andy has this incredible ability to whisper the right thing. And if you're not paying attention, he's got an even better ability to kick your head and say, you'd better pay attention. Andy, the world is different. Communications in America is different because you've been part of it. Thank you. I've been in a law firm for two years. Uh, I was not particularly happy there. And uh, I started looking for jobs, getting my resume out. And uh, <clears throat> I interviewed with this very nice lady who worked for the Metro system as a trial attorney. And I had applied for a trial attorney job. I, I had never done trial work, but I figured, all right, two years out of law school, I got an interview, why not? And she said, you know, you're a very talented, smart young lady, but you're really wrong for this job. What do you want to do? And I said, well, I really want to be a communications lawyer. That's what my background is in. That's what I studied in law school and undergraduate. She said, well, did you apply to the Media Access Project? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I did. And in those days, I used to get this pamphlet that had mostly government jobs. It came out, you know, every three months and you paid $90 for it. Uh, and I applied for a job for the Media Access Project, never heard, and I figured I wasn't a candidate. And she said, uh, well, my husband is the executive director. And it was Linda Lazarus that I had interviewed with. 
Uh, not surprisingly, Andy had lost my resume under a pile of papers. And after Linda got talking to him, uh, he called me up, interviewed me, and I got the job. So if you've ever seen Andy's office in any of the places he worked, it would not surprise you that he lost my resume. But the rest was history. In any event, there, is, there will never be anybody like Andy. Uh, there never was anybody like Andy. He is unique. He is wonderful. He is brilliant. Uh, and I want to wish him the happiest of 70th birthdays. And it's so great to see you really get the national recognition and the recognition from our law school, alma mater, University of Pennsylvania, which just gave him, uh, I believe, its highest award for alumni. Finally get the recognition that you deserve. Andy, I love you. Uh, and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. Mr. Andy Schwartzman, Executive Director, Media Access Project. In 1995, as a graduate student at Northwestern University, this was my introduction to Andy Schwartzman. At the time, I figured out who I wanted to be when I grew up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is very important material that you're discussing today, and the principal thrust of my testimony is that it's too important to be treated as an add-on to much larger legislation. These issues deserve much more attention in this subcommittee, and there's no reason to include it in this legislation. Many years later, I still haven't grown up, but I'm so honored and thankful to have spent so many years working with Andy Schwartzman. Andy, happy birthday from everybody at the Benton Institute, and we look forward to working with you for many more years.